Welcome back to the Ice Coffee Hour. This is Humphrey Yang, and so far the podcast has made two hundred and nine thousand dollars. Oh my wow. gosh! You're the closest to actual guests we've really? ever yeah. received. Oh, yeah. Incredible. Yeah, two hundred and thirteen thousand three hundred and thirty-two dollars. Oh. Yeah. I almost said two twelve, but I had watched that one that you did last last week with yeah. the billionaire, the billionaire son. Yeah. yeah. What's his name? Bobby Misner. Yes, Bobby yeah. Misner, yeah. and it was two oh three. So I was like, hmm, I'm gonna go in there with like two oh nine. It's fantastic. Date. Yeah. You're a yeah. podcast fan. Yeah, I watch them wow. all. Not all of them, yeah. but I watch a lot of them. Well, thank you so much for coming on the uh, the Iced Coffee Hour. We're uh, confronting Thanks. a TikTok <laughs> finance guru. <laughs> Yes. You got yes, you uh, 3.3 million followers on TikTok. Uh, you're a financial advisor as well. I used to be, Merrill Lynch. Nice. And yeah. how did you get started? Tell us a bit about your journey. How did you go from financial advisor to TikTok finance guru? How far do you want me to go? Like, all the way. All the way. Yeah. So I was born in the Bay Area, Redwood City. That's the name of the city. But uh, I'll just skip forward to the financial advisory part. <laughs> I graduated from college with a finance degree and from Loyola Marymount University down in LA. And um, I did a tech job for like a year, like a video game job, like customer support. Um, and then what I did was I wanted to always try my hand in finance because I had the finance degree. And I felt like for some reason that my dad would like it because he's very Chinese. It's like, I wanna prove to my dad that I can do it. And so I became a financial advisor for a year. I didn't really like it. I didn't do a good job. And I left after a year and then I went back to tech. So I went to into mobile video games. Mm -hmm. And I've always had this like dual passion of like video games and finance, and then also just like getting better at things or like growing things. And so I thought growing social media was always pretty fun. And I've always watched YouTube, like from a really young age, I was watching YouTube, like when it first came out in 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. I was watching a lot of it. And so basically I was doing my mobile video game job. I'd, I'd come across like an MKBHD video. I'd come across a Casey Neistat video. And then I started watching some Graham Stephan videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of how I got started with the whole content thing. In 2019, I made three YouTube videos just to test. In the summer, I was kind of bored. I was tr trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. And uh, it didn't do that well. No surprise. There's no, no, no followers there. But at the end of 2019, I looked on TikTok and I searched for the hashtag personal finance and there was none. There were like no videos. Mm -hmm. There was like one guy making stock videos. And I was like, okay, this is my opportunity. I've been listening to a lot of Naval Ravikant. Yeah. And he was like, you want to be first and you like, you want to scale with media. And so that's when I started, I made like a commitment to make 30 TikTok videos in 30 days. And by the end of 30 days, I think I had like 120,000 followers. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. Because you wow. can make a really bad video, like yeah. what is credit? And I was no camera presence, bad script, bad lighting, worst lighting, like the worst lighting possible. Mm -hmm. And it would get like 20,000 views. And for a new account, getting 20,000 views on a what is credit video, I was stoked. I was like, all right, let's try yeah. this out. Let's try this out. And uh, I just stuck with the 30 days. I got to 60 days. Then I got to 90. And I was like, oh, I might as well push for 100. And then after 100, I was like, I can't stop now. Yeah. And it was 2020. It was a pandemic. I got nothing to do. And I ended the streak at like 262 days of a TikTok every day. And I don't know if you remember, we talked. Yeah. In like April or May of 2020, I called into the Graham Stephan show. I had like 300, 400,000 subscribers at the time, followers at the yeah. time. And uh, yeah, like that's kind of the story. Why'd you break that your streak? So cool. I had a million followers and I was like, I don't know what, like, why am I still keeping the streak alive? I didn't really know what to do next. And so that's kind of why I did it. Were you making any money throughout that process? Yeah, I think when I called you on the Graham Stephan show, I had made at that moment like $4,000 and I had 400,000 followers on TikTok. And right. I remember we, us, we were talking about some brand deals and stuff. And my first brand deal offered me like $2,000 for a post. And I was like, super stoked. Yeah. And like, that was awesome. But for a really long time, I just didn't take any sponsors on the TikTok channel. Yeah. And still I'm kind of not against sponsors, but I don't take that many sponsorships. Mm -hmm. And so to answer your question, I think in 2020, I made like $19,000 off yeah. of content. How else were you making money though? Because you probably have expenses, rent, mortgage. What were you doing? Ah, uh, so I was an e-commerce consultant. Okay. So between my tech job, I left my tech job in 2016. I started my own e-commerce business, basically selling posters. And that I grew that pretty substantially, but then I was, became a consultant for other types of e-commerce businesses. So I was supplementing my income with that. And I also lived at home and I still live at home actually. So I'm 
I live at home with my parents. Didn't you mention dad. that on the Graham Stephan show? Did you? I think I did. Okay. Yeah. And I How think, old are you, yeah. Humphrey? So I am 34 years old. And uh, <laughs> why'd you grimace? <laughs> because I still live at home, but my dad's gone nine months out of the year. Okay. And it's only him. Mm -hmm. So basically, I have the house to myself. I haven't really felt the need to move out yet, mm -hmm. but I want to this year because I'm getting a little bit bored at home and I get kind of complacent and I get kind of in the same routine. Mm -hmm. And so far, I think this year I've kind of realized like it's not really making me happy anymore to stay at home. And I'd rather just spend the money to to move out yeah. somewhere. It's yeah. a very U.S. thing, I think, to move out really quickly. It seems mm -hmm. like everywhere other than the U.S., like it's customary to live at home almost until like you get married and at which point you, you get your own place. Yeah, and I did move out uh, at the age of like 20, 28 mm -hmm. for a year. I lived in the city, San Francisco, and I had an okay time, but I would still drive down to like my hometown and go to all my favorite, like my coffee shops and my favorite restaurants and my gym down there. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like I'd never like experienced the city life. I was just kind of commuting from the city back to my own hometown. So I was like, why am I even doing this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was paying like 2K a month in rent and I thought it was okay, but I wasn't really like living my best life because I had a couple of roommates. They're great roommates. But yeah. um, at some point I was just like, I'm just going to move home because it just seems so easy. But at this point, it's been five years since then and I'm getting a little bit bored at home and don't know where else to move. I can move anywhere te yeah. technically with my job, but I feel really bad leaving my dad. Like my dad's 90. That's, yeah. that's oh, another thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. So my dad's 90. He's in really great shape. So he travels a lot. But I feel really bad leaving him and I would feel super guilty if I like moved to like New York or Texas or Las Vegas or mm. anywhere and then something were to happen to him. Yeah. Right. And it's like I, I don't get those years back. I don't get that time with him back. I agree with that. So if I were to move, I would move somewhere like San Francisco mm -hmm. where I could just drive back for the weekend if he was home or I could be at home when he's home. And then the rest of the time I can just be in the city. I agree with that. Yeah. So tell us when you're making these TikTok videos, how are you coming up with ideas? Is there a formula to like going viral on TikTok? I think in the early days it was, it was easier because there was no finance content, right? Yeah. And as long as I picked a topic that was somewhat interesting and I had a good hook and I could hook people into a story about finances or learning something about how much a hydro flask costs that was good enough to go viral i had a couple good viral hits in 2020 but i've said i would say since then it's been really hard what are you noticing now with tiktok um like how has it changed finance tiktok or just tiktok in general both finance tiktok seems like it's kind of like a content farm like you just farm the videos let, let, let's make a skit about credit utilization mm -hmm. so it's like hey what's credit utilization I don't know. You tell me. You know I mean? It's like <laughs> oh very, gosh. and you know, I, I, I think I'm partially to blame for that because I took that format from another creator called Edmani Explains, and he's mm. a great guy, and he was making these business skits back in like April of 2020. I was like, oh, let me just take that and simplify it for like broader finance. But now that is like the yeah. de facto format yeah. for finance. Who TikToks. created that? So I noticed Mark Tilbury does it. Mm -hmm. Erica Kahlberg was the mm -hmm. one who really did it with like the life hacks. Where you learn that? I learned yeah. it from Erica. Yeah. Can we trace it back? Like who was the first to have done like that sort of sketch? Because I'm sure it didn't originate in finance. I'm sure it no. came from something else. It initially came from like these comedic skits. Like people would just make really funny skits on TikTok. And that was like the trend on TikTok in 2020 just make these funny skits of you talking to yourself right mm -hmm. and then and Monty was really the guy who took it to business he started to cuss in them he was explaining like why elon wants to take over twitter this year for example but it was all business focused mm -hmm. and i think at that point we had a small finance tiktok community on like a slack chat or discord chat or something and uh we just were kind of bouncing ideas off each, of each other and i was like oh let me try this skit format i think my first one was what is a dividend mm -hmm. And that first one did like 6 million views oh, off the bat. Man, And that whole summer, like from July to September, every skit I made, million views, 2 million views, 10 million views. Like it was just crazy. It was crazy the amount of people that loved it at the time and how easy it was to explain a financial concept because it's so, it's so easy to explain a financial concept mm -hmm. when it's conversational. So that did really well. But then I would say in 2021, it started to kind of like, I noticed they didn't do as well anymore. And then now this year, like after the life hack stuff, Erica Kohlberg, shout out. Mm -hmm. We like Erica, I love Erica, but it's like everyone's seen that format now. So like, it's really hard to differentiate that format. Or like, I feel like people scroll and they see the 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 skit format. They're yeah. like, yeah, scroll away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so interesting on TikTok, just how fast uh, trends change. Mm -hmm. And I feel like something could be in for like a week and then it's done and it's played out like you have to find the next one. 
Yeah, yes and no, I would okay. say. I would say with finance content, it's really topical. So like the topics that do well will always do well because people want to hear it again. And people have like the shortest term memory on TikTok. Like after yeah. two months, you don't even remember what you yeah. saw. So like mm. if you saw another one, that's fine. But first, we got to thank our sponsor, Stash. Graham, I've been saving up some money recently, and I just don't know what to do with this fast, vast cash stash that I received. What? The fast cast vast stash. Jack, I think, <laughs> I think you just answered it with your, your last rhyme, Stash. Stash is a personal finance app that helps make investing easy and affordable. Over 6 million Americans already use it, and that's because Stash is super simple, and you don't need a lot of money to start investing. And? They even let you buy fractional shares. And that means you're able to invest in stocks like Amazon, Apple, Tesla, and more with less than just $5. And Stash also offers tools like automatically investing on a set schedule to help you build good financial habits. Which, by the way, is something that you should already be doing if you're watching the channel. Stash offers three simple plans starting at just $1 a month. And seriously, guys, getting started with them is a breeze. Just download the Stash app, add cash to your account, and start investing in your favorite stocks in minutes. So join the more than 6 million people who know that it's never too early to invest in yourself and sign up for Stash today. And to do that, the link is down below in the description. Again, there's a link down below in the description to get started with Stash today. And guys, they are running a huge promotion. If you sign up with that link, they will give you a $50 bonus when you deposit just $1 in your account. It's a no brainer. You guys should sign up with that link down below in the description. Thank you so much, Stash. And back, back to, to the, the podcast. podcast. So you could remake the same video a few times. Yeah, I actually yeah. have remade the same video maybe three or four times, okay. but told it somewhat differently right. or changed the words around or maybe use a different example. And it does just as well. Sometimes you can even straight repost a video and it does better the second are time. Are you serious? And I don't really repost, but there are some other financial creators I've talked to. They're like, oh yeah, gosh. why just repost? I've, I've always, I'm, I'm not, I can't try this, but I've always been curious to take an old video of mine and just repost it as new. Yeah. I'm curious how it would do. I, I just want to explain, Jack, why are you laughing, man? Dude. I'm curious. We talked about this a while ago. I'm just curious. I, I just think it's funny. It's so <laughs> lazy, Graham. <laughs> I'm just, it's like, you're curious. trying just so hard not to miss your, your upload schedule by posting something that I already even posted before. <laughs> Graham, what are you thinking, but man? I'm curious how it'll do. It'll will, probably do well. Like but if it's YouTube? the same video, yes, on YouTube, if oh. I post the same video and I have it listed as an old video, uh, but I just reposted a year later, is that going to be recommended against the old video? Is YouTube going to know that it's a re-upload? We could try this on the, the Graham he Stephan has show. this great video. I yeah. always loved it. But it's like, who makes more after X amount oh, of years? The is it the plumber or the doctor? Yeah. Right. And I love that video. I watched it such a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that video is perfectly evergreen. It can be posted whenever. Right. And your original thumbnail was so bad i know and i feel like the title wasn't that great but it's no. decent and you could remake that exact same video and it could do like super well that's a, that's better for a tiktok video i'll give you the idea for tiktok for youtube i couldn't make that video but basically i came came up with this like four years ago you know what i didn't come up with that i think i saw someone else who did some sort of comparison between a, someone who did a trade versus a physician who had a higher net worth mm. at the age of like 45 and 50 and the answer was you'd make more money you'd have a higher net worth working in the trades than you would becoming a doctor by the age of like 50. And it wasn't until a person became like mid fifties that did the physician actually make more money. Why is that? Debt. Debt. Yeah. Student loan debt and the age at which you really start making money. So for a doctor, they didn't really start making a you know, serious income until their mid thirties at the very earliest mm -hmm. versus right. a tradesman. Uh, I tracked the income. If they started working at 18 years old with no student debt, that gave them such a huge advantage with the compound interest. Does that also assume that that tradesman was making good decisions investing? Correct. Yeah, but also yeah. that assumes the doctor is as well. Right. Got so. Yeah, the doctor could be buying a brand new seven series BMW to park out <laughs> side right. of the side of the office and like yeah. ten secretaries and yeah, you know they could do a whole bunch of stuff as well. For sure. But yeah, what about right. you? How's uh, what are you what are you doing on YouTube right now? So right now we have my main channel, which went through a bit of an existential crisis the past three months. I didn't really know what to make and I kind of wanted to make it more broad. Like I wanted to make like broad business essays, but they just didn't, don't do well in the main channel. So what I've done is I've created a second channel. I'm going to post them there. And the whole reason behind that is that I'm just still going to keep the main channel, the main channel, which is like personal finance and investing mm -hmm. advice. And then on the second channel, just kind of build build this like library of content that's hopefully bingeable for that audience. What's a broad viewers. business essay? Something like how Amazon makes money or 
the dark side of casinos. So kind of like a documentary type thing. Yeah, like a kind of Jake Tran. Yeah, if kind of you, Jake Tran, if you Jake, kind of went over. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. Jake Tran that video, I think it would be <laughs> so well. You Sunny V2 that yeah. video. Yeah. <laughs> you Patrick CC that it would do yeah. so yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's the idea. Is like okay, let's do business essays, but I'm gonna be more in the video, so it's not yeah. completely voiceover. Like I'll be part of some of the videos. So that's actually why we're here as well. Is we're gonna film that video about casinos tomorrow. Mm -hmm. At the casino. What's the video on casinos? It's, uh, I think we have two titles. The first is called the D the dark side of slot machines, or it's called how ugly carpets make casinos massive profits. No, I don't like that. Okay. Well, yeah. I, that's why we got two. I don't mind the ugly carpets oh, yes. because it's really thought provoking. Yes. So if you could somehow, uh, like have like a, the classic YouTuber thing right now is a big red arrow yes. pointed yeah. at like a disgusting carpet. That's how this makes casinos no. X. I probably yeah. wouldn't say ugly carpets, or how about but how this? this makes casinos millions. Why, why millions. all casinos have ugly carpets? Mm. Maybe something like that. I don't know. I think yeah. how yeah. this with the big arrow, it, that's just me. Though. That's kind of like but the new YouTube style. It's like, the new YouTube style. Well, it's arrow. a huge red arrow yeah. pointing at something kind of obscure that's thought provoking. Exactly. But I actually don't mind that at mm. all. There was a video okay. Uh, that I saw that went super viral about how a door makes some yes. Twitch streamer a bunch Ludwig. of money. Yep, yep. it was that. Mm -hmm. And that did extremely yeah. well. So you could do something similar That's to actually that. the exact thumbnail, like, inspiration I had, but yeah. just with a carpet and just, yeah. like, make everything else black besides the carpet with a little arrow to it. Yeah. But, yeah, so, it's, stuff, it's, yeah, it's, it's so, like, stuff like that. So tell, yeah, so tell us about that. I mean, but what's... It's, it's not going to be Jake Tran, which is all voiceover. Yeah. But he's he's in at the end, so credit Jake Tran. Cool. He's in at the end. But mm -hmm. it's more just, like, I'm the host, and then, like, you're going to see me 15% of the time on camera, but then it'll still be mostly B-roll. Yeah. And, so and tell info. us about the dark side of the casino. What do you want to know? It, what the video that? is about what the house so, always yeah. wins the the, the uh, carpets are distracting so yeah, it's like disorienting like, there's like four psychological ways that casinos get you to stay inside yeah. the casino right like mm -hmm. carpets are ugly uh no clocks or windows right. they have curving hallways where you know they don't want you to make a right hand turn because yep. a right a hard right turn activates the decision making part of your brain mm -hmm. so like you don't want that so they all curve and they all have yeah. maze like layouts and then we talk about the business breakdown like the the revenue breakdown of casino because it's not all from gambling it's actually mostly from rooms and entertainment and and actually uh shopping and like mm. food and then mm. yeah it's only 30 percent of casino profits at least at mgm is that's from interesting gambling. wait okay. i thought that they give all of the rooms to the really big high rollers they though. do but they still make a lot of money on the rooms. Like we paid three forty for our room tonight for a night mm -hmm. on Wednesday. So so yeah, it's like that. And then the last part of the video is on slot machines because slot machines actually make the most money for casinos. Right. Just straight up, they make a lot of money, and a lot of people play them. Doesn't really make sense why they play them. I think they're boring, but some people love them, and they make like five times as much revenue for the casino than blackjack or craps or roulette. So yep. that's why they're everywhere. Now, what about online casinos? Didn't do any research there. <laughs> that would be yeah. interesting. That's what yeah. I think they're going to be cracking down on pretty soon. Maybe that's Twitch the next is, video. I would say that make that the next video. The more make I'm that. seeing about uh, how much these Twitch streamers are making from from online casinos, it's staggering. Yeah, it's staggering yeah. millions a month. Yes. Yeah. Per month. Yeah. So like imagine they run their own casino. Yeah, two to three million dollars yeah. a month just to get paid to yeah. gamble. Uh, wh who was it that turned it down? I think it was Mizkiff. Who said mm. that he turned down? I think it was like eight hundred thousand dollars a month, and he only had to stream for fifteen hours a month. Yeah, and then he said that his like, uh, he's like, but that doesn't mean that everybody has a prize. He's like, because if somebody's paying me like, I think he said ten million a month, he'd take it. Yeah, something like that. Honestly, Honestly, yeah, oh, you know what? Too. Yeah, yeah. Shamelessly, I will. Say <laughs> yeah, he that. said he said it was ten million dollars a year. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah, ten million dollars a year was his offer, um, or how much he was offered to gamble for fifteen hours. A month on Twitch on Twitch and it's this weird gray area yeah, because like technically they're not breaking a law but at what point does that influence children's desire to maybe gamble where they should right, right right yeah I think right. what what they should do why isn't there like a website where you could just this would be a good idea a website that you could stream just gambling like just that, and you have to enter like mm. your age, or like you know, I'm 21 years old. Yeah, so you, you can watch it when you're only 18. No, older? so you can watch it if you're. I don't know what the if it's 18 or 21. I don't know. Oh, but I don't like know, yeah. whatever it is, you have to like select. I'm 18 years old, and it's just yeah. a website that you could just watch people gamble. You think people would watch that? I do. 
That's yeah, but then I these casinos yeah. wouldn't be offering the streamers, which then means the streamers would stop doing yeah. that. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. I think I think I mean the value is definitely in their audience, right? But uh, mm. yeah, would you have a price if like a casino comes to you no. and says fifty? I don't think you could pay me to do no that. price to break your morals, like fifty no. million dollars a year. I turned down a lot of sponsorships because I just don't align with them. And really? Yeah, and it, it's like I could use the money, but I don't. You know, I don't feel like I would not use the product. So if I don't use the product and I don't feel good about the product, I'm yeah. not going to promote it. Graham, so what's we, your price? <laughs> oh, to do, yeah, to everybody's do, got a to price. To do, ga- to to do gambling? Every day, man. He does, he does it for free. <laughs> <laughs> man, I just love to gamble. No. Uh, the options. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, it depends. Gosh, I mean, it would it would have to be so much money that like... Right. Pro- it would probably have to be probably $10 million a month guaranteed for a year and i would just have the disclaimer like guys this is stupid but right. but i think my audience would respect it enough and be like hey graham's getting paid so much money like <laughs> it would be the financially smart move to take it so i would i think my audience would understand and would get the like hey that that's they're overpaying it's a lot of money we get it uh but it would have to be guaranteed for a year and guaranteed that i would not get in trouble because the last thing i'd want is like right. illegal trouble or then it's not worth it. Like any risk of any is no. Yeah. But I think, assuming I, it's fine for one year, one, you know, a hundred million bucks. I would do the same as Graham, mm. but I would make sure, cause I could never lead someone in without a disclaimer. Right. Oh, yeah. So I would make sure that somewhere in like the clause or in the contract or whatever, there's a clause where it's like, Jack, you can say whatever you want. And I'll be like, guys, never do this. Don't touch these casinos, <laughs> whatever. I'm getting paid bank. Uh, yeah. Like th- that's why I'm doing this, but yeah, hey, so, enjoy. And you gotta yeah. have like the, the little, you know, disclaimer that shows on the bottom of the screen that goes by. Yeah. Like, do not do this at home. <laughs> Yeah, no, we've turned down. So, like, I'd much rather do that. We've turned down right. like every NFT offer, oh, every gosh. like we turned down a lot crypto. Of as well. Oh yeah. gosh, yeah. I would say eighty percent of them are just crap. And there's a few that like even get through. Like, mm-hmm. the, we have an initial like we sift through them, and it's like ninety percent just go off. Right. Even even the remaining ten percent, there are a few. I'll look into afterwards. I'm just, I'm just not a fan. I just don't like it. There's a train going by. It's the classic. Oh, no. oh, gosh, oh gosh, Jack. Jack. I thought we train. moved on no, from no, this. No, no. Right. There's a train going by. And there are two kids playing on the train tracks like mm-hmm. 100 yards in front of the train. And there's a really obese person standing in front of you. And you're like on this balcony above where the train is going, right? Would you push that obese person in front of the train? They're just obese for the sake of being, you know, stopping the train or whatever. Not to be insensitive. But <laughs> just to like stop the train. Would you do that to save the lives of the two people that are on the tracks? So it's one life for two. See, that's a utilitarian moral question. Which a utilitarian would say, yeah, push push that person. Sure, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what would I do? Yeah. Gosh, that's so hard. What would you do, Graham? I think, we answer, I I think, think, I think I answered I think, this. Yeah. You answer first. I'll tell you my answer. Why do they have to be obese, Jack? That, no, that was just for this. Okay, never mind. I take it back. They're not obese. Okay, they're a person. They're, an, they're just <laughs> a normal person. Yes, okay. okay wait, not normal. They are a, a human of that is average. The train the has department. a sensor that detects yes. people once they're hit, and they're just a regular person. Wow. And if you push this right. person over, <laughs> the sensors will go off yeah. and yeah. stop the train. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It could oh, be, yeah, right. it's no different than like a Saw myself. movie. Like, would you, I, would you, yeah. I would push them. You would push them. Mm. One for two. I th- I think I said I wouldn't mm. because I would not push them. Yeah, because the 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 train track they're on the train tracks. They shouldn't have been on the train tracks. Mm. And they're going. You gotta think of risky behavior. You gotta think about it. They're yeah. playing on the train tracks. They shouldn't have been doing that. It's tragic, but I couldn't. Uh, so who so like an innocent life? I couldn't do that. Mm. The other the other two were on the train tracks. So they they. I guess I was know, trying to think of it more yeah. in like a vacuum, like. Yeah, they're there. Yeah, yeah. Let's say they were tied there. down on the train track. <laughs> yes. Oh, gosh. Now they're forced against yeah. their will to be there. <laughs> then would you push this normal, not, oh, sorry, not normal, man. just like an average person? I don't know. Comment below what you would do. I wouldn't, I, well, it sucks because oh, I wouldn't want to be the cause of that person's uh, demise. You know? So it's like right. the other person, uh, you know, demised the, the, the two people on the train tracks tied down. Like, that's their responsibility. Yeah. But Mine would be the unaliving of a of a innocent person. What if the I, person I, was like a serial killer? I would push him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. yeah. I probably couldn't do it. Like I'd I don't know if I would even like to say I could, but yeah, I feel like I couldn't tough. live with myself I don't know if, if I actually was responsible for the death of someone else, you know. That's a really, t- it's a really uh, tough question. So 
Yeah. Yeah. We don't say the D word. Oh, sorry. Unalive. The unaliveness of yeah. another person. The demise. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, what do you think about uh, anyway? Jack, <laughs> right, I don't know. Uh, later, no, that's that's that. no, 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 no. <laughs> Let's, uh, really quick. Let's talk about. Uh, I want to know your thoughts on the TikTok finance gurus aspect, oh. because I think TikTok has maybe not the best uh, reputation for for some people pumping stuff or maybe not giving the best advice. And from what I've seen, there's both a lot of good advice, but there's a lot of really bad advice. And yes. what are your thoughts on the stigma of TikTok finance? I think the stigma is there for a reason. There's probably more bad actors than there are good actors. Obviously, I, if I if I see something that doesn't really resonate with me and I think it's bad advice, I just ignore it. Yeah. You know, I let them do whatever they're doing. I'm not gonna like come for them in the comments, but I would not recommend that channel to anybody learning financial advice. And so, yeah, there's gonna be good and bad with everything, just like with YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like there's gonna be some people on YouTube that are bad actors and trying to get you to buy whatever the hell that they're, they're buying or selling. Yeah. So I do think that it's gotten a, a pretty bad stigma though, because you know, the, the videos that do go viral, sometimes they can be really dumb yep. and they, and, and I just don't feel like that happens on YouTube versus like on TikTok, like some 16 year old thinks that they can make $50,000 flipping, you know, crypto in 24 hours by just getting 1% a day or something like that. You know, something, something silly like that. Mm -hmm. And that could go viral. That could get like 2 million views because people watch it and like they rewatch yeah. it. So. I remember when TikTok banned cryptocurrency for a while. They did. And that was for like eight months. They banned financial, not banned, but they shadow banned. Yeah. Like they basically put a, like a kind of like a filtration on anything finance related. So if I mentioned the word stock market, the video would get no views, not no views, but it would get throttled. Mm -hmm. And same thing with like bank account or I don't know. And when was that? I want to say summer of last year. So and like May to like August or something. Really? And as a yeah. finance creator, how did that affect the content you were making? Uh, that was a depressing time, the TikTok, <laughs> in the TikTok life. I mean, yeah. every video wasn't doing very well. So I just had to reset my expectations for how, how good a video would do. Um, I was actually flown down to TikTok for like a, I guess they just wanted to talk to some creators. And I did tell the CEO that like directly. It was like, hey, the you CEO got, of TikTok. Yeah. He's like, hey, uh, you guys got some bad filtration going on, bad moderation. And it's because TikTok has a development team in China. And they're all Chinese, all the TikTok developers mm -hmm. that are working on the algorithm for the U.S. product. So what happens is, is the U.S. team will give them feedback, but that feedback might get lost in translation. Like imagine telling a developer, hey, filter out finance content. What is the developer going to do if they don't know much about finance content? They're just going to take the keywords and just filter them all. Versus like contextually, it could be good advice or bad advice. You know, mm -hmm. you never know. And so there's a big disconnect in the teams. And so I think that remote ta that remote work is is tough. And then there's also a language barrier. So like the developers have to figure out how to do that. Now, I saw a video. I'm not sure if it's, uh, you know, pocus pocus. But I watched a video on the algorithm of TikTok mm -hmm. and how the U.S., is a lot different than what it is in China. And I heard in China, mm -hmm. they're showing very uplifting videos that are very motivational, that are very educational, and that, uh, in my opinion, make them just overall better, more well-rounded people. Versus in the US, I scroll TikTok and I see the most mind-numbing content that just dissolves the brain. It's just so bad and just puts you into this daze of, you zone out and then an hour goes by and you're just dumb i hate to say it like but dance videos yeah or it's just trends or but, but it, it's all really viral content and it's addicting i mean i'll i'll straight like every time i go on tiktok if i'm sitting there like actually scrolling mm -hmm. 10 20 minutes and it oh, feels yeah, what fast. feels like a minute yeah but they're all mind-numbing videos mm. is is do you know if there's any truth to that or what do you I, think on this? i don't know if there's any truth to that but it could be also a difference in cultural values right like mm. The culture over there they might value that type of stuff mm -hmm. versus what what do we value in the united states it's tough to say i don't know if TikTok is doing something crazy with their algorithm in different countries or it's used as a weapon to make us dumber yeah. or something like that but i'd like to think that i always like to think on the optimistic side so like yeah. i give people the benefit benefit of the doubt even companies sometimes mm -hmm. and i think uh sometimes to a fault but i give people the benefit of the doubt and i think that probably the algorithm is just optimizing for view duration, right? Because that's all they want, yeah. want to do is keep you on the platform. I think when you said values, it's very true. And I think uh, the algorithm is probably so good that it just gets whatever gets the most uh, watch time, yep. clicks, uh, engagement. 
And that just happens in the U.S. to be the content that, you know. Is mind-numbing. Is mind-numbing, yeah. Think about it. Everyone just wants to zone out. Like, if you go on TikTok, probably, and I would say the same thing with YouTube, probably not as much with YouTube, but a lot of, for a lot of people, TikTok is just a way, how could I spend these next five minutes, 10 minutes, mm -hmm. that turns mm -hmm. into an hour? Because it's just, gets you. Yeah, it's quick content, yeah. and some people really enjoy it. Like, I know that we watch it, and yeah. we're creators, and so sometimes we're watching it with a critical eye, but I have friends who just watch it, and they're laughing the yeah. entire time, and they're loving it, and they're sending it to their friends, and oh, yeah. they're making memes, and, and they have a great time. They don't think it's a waste of time. Yeah. But some that people, like, like me, I think it's kind of a waste of time to watch it. I'm always like, oh, I just watched 20 minutes. God, yeah. that sucks. But at the same time, I don't watch Netflix. And some people, oh, like, you know, at, the end, at the end of the day, yeah. They want, yeah. So it's like, who am I to judge <laughs> That's their true. entertainment? That's fair. Right? That's fair. I it's kind of like that. the same argument with video games. And I, I've had this video game argument before. Like, people will come to me like, oh, why do you play video games? But it's like, it's just entertainment. It's like, what do I, like, what does it matter if I choose to play video games or go watch a movie or go read or do something? And I think there's a, sig a stigma there that video games are not engaging or mm -hmm. good for you. But I learned a lot of my social skills through gaming growing up. And I also learned a lot of, you know, typing skills and commerce yeah, skills through, yeah. you know, trading, you know, <laughs> trading my final fantasy yeah. gill and not getting scams like i haven't been scammed <laughs> on crypto yet That's why good. because of video games <laughs> like i'm really oh, wary yeah. i'm like oh you're trying to scam me like i'm not gonna fall for this <laughs> like i've fallen for this before yeah, hey if, so. if you send me 100 bucks i'll send you 200 dollars back oh yeah yeah you, know what, that, you know what that yeah. sounds like graham <laughs> this is good this is gonna be way off topic here but okay uh, no. <laughs> when i was younger i used to play this game called the runescape yep yeah. i know exactly yeah. what you're talking about and, and there i was, was gonna go there on, and I decided so not to. yeah so there's this there was these people at the marketplace that would stand there and they would be like oh doubling gold right so you know so <laughs> yep. and then so what i would do is i would go up to them i'd be like well i want you to double like let's say 500,000 of my gold, but you have to prove it to me first. So here's like 50K, like some measly amount. And then uh, they would do it because they think I'm going to give them the, the big thing. And I would just take their... their thing. It reminded me. <laughs> so I was scamming yeah. the You would scam the scammer. I, I yeah. scammed the scammer. This is one of my favorite videos that I, I was showing this to Jack. This is like two years ago. You know the scammers in the comments section that pretend to be you? I remember that video. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for those unaware, I, uh, I, I started talking to three of those scammers. And they promise like these Ponzi like returns where if you know I'm gonna put money in, they guarantee it's gonna be worth a certain amount. And so I put twenty bucks in one to see like how it works. And I told them up front, I said, Hey, I got like fifty thousand dollars, but I just wanna see, like, make sure it works first. And so I, I gave them twenty bucks and they take you to this like fake web page where, where basically they could type in how much money is in your account. Mm -hmm. Um and then it grew over time to like thirty six dollars, like forty bucks. And I said, wow, this is great. I just want to make sure the withdrawal works first. Can you send me this money back? And then I'll send in like 5000 or something yeah, like that. Yeah. They legit sent the money back. Like extra money? Extra money. Nice. We so did the I same put it, thing, but you did yeah. it in real life. Yeah, so I sent in $20. They sent back 40 And I think we used your buddy's uh, PayPal or Venmo so they wouldn't know it's me. And so your buddy actually got the money and sent it over to me. Amazing. Yeah. Didn't, yeah, didn't you want to still collect the money? What do you mean? The, so the $20 cool. profit. Yeah. <laughs> Something like my that. My buddy yeah. got it and then he sent it back over to Graham. Yeah. <laughs> well, I put like, my, it, was my, it was my money to begin with. That's, again, uh, that's my money to begin 20 with. 20 cent iced coffees. Yeah. yeah. It's good so, thing. but yeah, it, yeah, it reminds me of that. So, you know, as long as you're a step ahead, <laughs> gotta bait him with a little bit, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, great. actually, we, uh, we never really told this story afterwards. What happened? Um, one of the guys found out about that video after I posted it. The scammer. And the scammer. Wow. Not the guy who sent me the money, but another one of the another guys. Another scammer. Watched the video afterwards and then actually got in contact with me. And we talked. And it was after the, we talked, I wanted to get him on the second channel. And it was a weird thing because I, I felt 90% he was telling the truth on this. Mm -hmm. But he gave depictions of like the working conditions there. He was from, I think, was he? Uganda, mm -hmm. I think it was. And just the working conditions are really terrible. They're trying to support their families. There's no money. This is one of the only ways that they could, like, support their families. And he basically just said, like, I don't want to be doing this. Right. There are, they're, you know, it's run by the gangs here. And if we don't do it, they threaten our families and this and that. Mm. So this is why we're doing it. Um, oh, and then he, he would only call me during like certain time. Like he said, like, you cannot text me at all. Like just call it. He was pretty secretive about it, which made me think that he was legit. And then I said, if you wanted to come on the second channel and like just expose this, uh, I'll give all the ad revenue 
to you. Yeah. And I will uh, set up like a, I don't know, if we could do a GoFundMe, I don't know, something like Maybe that. Maybe he was trying to scam you. And that's why I worried about that. <laughs> I worried just yeah. in case. I felt it was real, but I didn't know if I want to take that. Part of me thought maybe I just do it and let the audience decide if mm. they believe it's fake or real. Uh, he never decided to go through with it and decided to hold off, which makes me think it was real. Because he was worried about the safety would, of his family yeah. and like if he gets outed as like right, that guy. Right. Um, I don't think it was worth it to him. So I have a feeling it was real. That's a tough moral situation as yes. well. Yes. For sure. Yeah, and I couldn't post a video like that. Right. Uh, if anything were to ever happen to him, that like that would be my fault, and I couldn't. Got it. Do that. But overall, seemed like a nice guy. <laughs> okay. So you know, so behind all of this, all you know, right. behind these people scamming, even though it's annoying, uh, the situation there is incredibly different than the U.S. I think a lot of people put ourselves as like, well, I wouldn't do that. Mm. But meanwhile, you have access to you know get a job anywhere right, and make twenty thousand right. dollars a year yeah, versus yeah, them like children that you have to yeah take care of yeah imagine imagine that you know the area is run by gangs right you have three kids at home that don't have food and like what's your option it's not like you, you could bag or like go work at starbucks or anything yeah. like, what do you do you do that because that's the way to and you know and they rationalize it that you know they're wealthy americans they they got health care they have roads and electricity and running water and you know they could afford it so I can see that. You know, so I can see what, yeah. So after course. it gave me a it depends on the situation. Big sure. perspective on yeah. just like in America or really in, in many first world countries, you're very fortunate. Mm. So, and you kind of forget that uh, the rest of the world is not like that. Lesson of the day, guys. Love that lesson. Thanks, lesson of the, you're welcome, Jack. Hmm. Yeah. I think we should also talk about your income over time. Oh boy. I'm sure that'll yeah. kind of be an interesting journey. I remember you said you initially started out as a video game customer support person yes. outside of college. Yes. How much were you making doing that? 40K a year. And you did that for how long? A, a year and a half doing customer support. Year and a half. So 40K a year, this was 2011, 2010, 2011. And this was in the Bay Area This as was well? in the Bay Area, yeah. How'd you survive on 40K a year in the Bay Area? I lived at home. Well, <laughs> nothing's changed. That's the thing. Nothing's in the Bay Area, changed. rent would have been forty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, you know, it would have been twenty five hundred a month. It was a little, yeah. it was a little cheaper back then. Yeah. Like the the whole tech scene hadn't exploded quite yet. Got it. Like Facebook really started to explode after twenty fourteen. I would say is when ev like all the development started to happen and rent prices started to go crazy. So in twenty ten, it was still okay. It was still like manageable, but mm -hmm. I still didn't want to move out because I'm only making forty k a year. As a financial advisor, I made like fifty k a year. And so then, a step up. A step up. Yeah. Yeah, but not by much. And then um even after I was licensed, it, it was still fifty K a year. And then they wanted me to get clients in and start making more through commissions. So mutual funds, they've had, they have expense ratios and you know, the financial advisor gets paid a percentage of, of the mutual yeah. funds that you sell. And it's usually just mutual funds like VU or VTI, but but wrapped differently with a higher expense ratio that, you know, someone pays for because they want the service or they want someone to guide them through the market, if you will. So is that what most financial advisors do? They just find other like index funds and then kind of wrap it in a mutual fund S type thing. I'm not, yeah. And then slap on an expense ratio. But the reason why they can justify doing that is by finding people and presenting them to it in a service where you basically, you're the, the financial advisor would be the person that takes the action of investing and basically guaranteeing, oh, you, you'll be fine for the most part. Right, when I was at Merrill Lynch, I'm not gonna speak for all financial advisors, but I would mm -hmm. say at Merrill Lynch, there was one guy who was doing Doing very well for himself and he says i don't really manage portfolios i manage expectations mm. and so he was just on the phone with clients all the time managing their expectations for what the portfolio should return mm. and that's essentially what they were doing is kind of like picking funds you know let's say the lazy three fund portfolio they would just kind of pick that for a client obviously you want to tailor it to their risk tolerance and their time horizon and all that good stuff but essentially that was the investing piece and then they also offered like planning so like retirement planning estate planning five to nine plans, all that sort of thing. So it was like an all in one service, but I would say for the most part, if you're just going to a financial advisor to invest, you'd probably be better off doing it yourself with like VU or VTI or a robo advisor like mm -hmm. Wealthfront, for example, like mm -hmm. be just fine. Yeah. Um, and that's what you kind of notice with like millennials and maybe even younger is that they're w more willing to do it themselves. But I would say the older generation still likes a financial advisor. I think a lot of it is just calming people down making yeah. sure they don't sell and they keep investing 
Because I would Correct. imagine how many how many people in 2020 were like, we got to sell everything. The market's going down. And then the financial advisors tell him, no, don't worry. Yep. Don't worry. We got to buy more. What do you mean buy more? <laughs> I bet it was a lot of just, you know, the calming. The stock market people. just flipped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just saw Grant's video. The stock market's about to reverse. And they got to say, you know, did you watch the end, though? He said, buy and hold index funds. GCA. Oh, I didn't make it that far. I only looked at the title thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was that was uh, my financial advisory period, right. and then I, the next gaming company I worked at was called Machine Zone, and Machine Zone created that video game called Mobile Strike and Game of War. They used to have these Super Bowl commercials with Arnold Schwarzenegger and like mm. Kate uh, Kate Upton. Do you not mm. remember those? Yeah, and uh, that was a really well funded company. But I started off doing quality quality assurance for them, so very similar to customer support. I was making like. 16 bucks an hour and then i started doing live ops so live ops is something very different it's basically optimizing in-game packages based on the hour to sell the most revenue possible to the gamer at that time mm. and that was paying i think my first salary was 75k a year so this oh, was wow. now yeah. yeah it was a big step up and then six months after that it was like it, it got increased to 90 and then six months after that i was making like 120. Wait, what exactly months, were you doing hmm. so imagine like a mobile video game. Mm -hmm. Do you play Clash of Clans or I did back in uh, high school. Candy Crush, for example. They have played. those offers that when you first sign in, you can buy a package, like an in-game package of items. Sure. And that stuff is not just random. That's all bit backed by data analytics, by you know, A B tests, by everything that you can imagine, because they want to figure out what's gonna get people to spend the most amount of money. Mm -hmm. And so every hour to have a real time chart of the revenue for that company for that game almost by the minute. So it's almost like mm. looking at your YouTube analytics, yeah. like you're seeing how many views per minute are coming in, but instead you see revenue. And so when you're looking at that, you're like, okay, right now this this package that I'm running on this game is making this, this hour about 100K. Let me try to make a package for the next hour that I'll run at the top of the hour. So like, let's say it's 12 p.m. right now. I'll make a package that starts at 1 p.m. And I'll try to get people more enticed to buy that second package. At the same time that package is going, you can run an in-game event to really incentivize people to buy that first package mm. or that package that you're showing. Yeah, And then you can look at the data analytics for all the user balances. So like, oh, this user doesn't have enough coal or this user doesn't have, like the majority of users don't have enough uh, like uh, wood, for example, just an in-game item. And so then you can sell them the wood with an event that requires a lot of wood to beat the event, if that makes sense. Wow. So you're using oh like God. user- genius. That's genius. Yeah. So you're Holy using user crap. balances, the data there, then you're crafting a package that exactly matches that event. And oftentimes the package would have just enough wood, but not enough wood to finish the event. And that was basically how that company monetized very well. Oh my gosh. And so I could change these packages on an hourly basis. And uh, I was doing that for like a year straight, but it was, a, it was almost how a 24 seven making? job. How much were they making? At its height, I think we made one game made 110 million in a month. Oh my oh gosh. gosh! It was about like three to five million a day, and if it was under three, the CEO at the time would get really pissed. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. way! It was the team. The oh team started gosh. out with just me and another guy. Uh, well, actually, it was me and like two other guys, my boss and like another guy at first, and then it really started to expand. By the time I left, it was a team of like 20, and almost every mobile video game company has a live ops team now. And uh, maybe not Clash of Clans. Clash of Clans is in Finland. They do things a little bit differently. They probably just have one or two guys running it. But a lot of the video games now have like massive teams because it makes a big difference in bottom line. But the thing is you have to manage it 24 seven. So we had like these weird random night shifts. Like I'd have to get up at 4 a.m. sometimes to run the events until like 12. And then, then I would go into work and then I'd stay there all day. And it was a very like uh, FaceTime culture. Like you wanted to spend a lot of time in there. Mm -hmm. So that was from 2014 to 2016, and that time flew by like that. Like, I don't even remember it. Like, it was so yeah. fast. Did that not make you want to get into the uh, mobile video game space? No, it didn't really feel like real money. Just like, you know, like anything, you get, get kind of numb to it, and you kind of don't really put the numbers together. But, uh, yeah, it was a bit, I mean, it was a big company. It did really well. It was valued at like 5 to $10 billion at one point. It eventually did come crashing down a little bit. And they got bought, and they got bought by App Lovin. Have you heard of that company? Mm -mm. App Lovin is, uh, is a mobile game studio, and they IPO'd like like last year or something like that. Two years oh ago, my gosh! How much did they get acquired for? They actually got acquired for like I think it was like seven hundred million dollars. Oh so it was gosh. worth five to ten. 
but then like some some macro events happened like they couldn't get the funding to like raise at that valuation then they got acquired for 700 million after everything was going down mm. and the initial investors or all the investors put in 800 million into the company so it was underwater so all my stock was worthless after that really mm -hmm. and that hap that happens to a lot of tech companies where they raise so much money to scale as quickly as possible but if they don't get acquired for above what they raise for then all the common stockholders aka the employees they get wiped out yeah because they got to yeah. pay back everyone else but capital they, yeah up. they pay yeah. off the debt the debt first so they pay off the c team to like transition the company wow but they don't actually pay you know the a lot of the common stockholders don't get anything Where unless do you, you still yeah. work there and and in that case yeah. they gave the people that still work there the new shares of app Lovin. so they did pretty well actually oh my gosh what do you think led to their downfall there were a few things. I think they pushed really too hard on monetization. Like it was a team that was really incentivized to make a lot of money. And so if they weren't hitting their revenue targets based on the investors, you know, expectations, mm -hmm. the team would push harder. And like, basically you can inflate a game. What that means is like, if you keep pumping resources into a game, like if I just make 2 trillion wood in that wood example, mm -hmm. then wood becomes valueless, right? just like anything. So you have to balance in-game economics with what you're selling. And if like, you're just pumping the, because you want to sell more, you just pump. Right. You, you can give you, crazy deals. You can, that basically yeah, you can make, give crazy deals. Yeah. And then there was one exploit or exploit where like users could switch their app country to like, I was gone at this yeah. point, but users could switch their app country to like Egypt or something and get a hundred dollar pack for like 15 bucks. Uh, and it was known as like the bug sale or something like that. Like it looked like a bug. So like people were buying it. Wow. But essentially, like, it was a team with, like, bad, I guess, incentives yeah. to try to hit revenue. And then that bug occurred, and they kept pushing it because they thought it was making them revenue. But it was just eroding the game. Oh, my god! And gosh. so eventually that game kind of, like, slowly falls off. A, a what typical game mobile, that? A, a mo mobile strike, mobile strike or game of war. <clears throat> those, typical, those typical games have, like, a three- to five-year life cycle. Mm -hmm. So after, That's, like... Yeah. I, th I think this also circles back to ethics. Like... Did it ever feel weird to make events that, oh, like you don't have enough resources, so you got to buy more or, you know, because at that point, are you, are you losing the vision of the game, you know, yeah. to provide entertainment? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the games weren't really designed to be, in my opinion, fun. Like I didn't really have a great time playing them, but they, it, they attracted a really hardcore user base that was not afraid to spend money. Whales. And whales make up most of the revenue of any mobile game, right? Just like at a casino, the top mm -hmm. 1% probably makes up their entire revenue. Why does whales spend so much money? Uh, there's just like a certain cohort of person. So like if you acquire 100 paid users, like they're going to pay in the game, like the top 1% or 2% will spend the most. Like they'll make up your entire revenue stack. So like oh. it's kind of like the 80-20 rule. Like yeah. 80% of the profits come from 20% of the people. It was like that with mm -hmm. whales. Like there was one whale. <laughs> it's like... The son of like some sort oh of like Dubai God. billionaire Wales. or something I like that. I thought you meant people from <laughs> Wales. No, Jack, I thought are you, you meant your host people. Jack, Jack is so wow. adorable. Jack was like, "Wow, those wow. people from Wales spend oh, a lot." That of was a Jack. That, that was a Jack moment. Right over my head. Wow. That was like that's quintessential Jack. Really oh my God. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, Jack, Jack, in the future, I, I wouldn't admit that. I just roll with the punches. I had to, man. <laughs> why you have to? You didn't have to. Well, I'm Welsh, so that's oh. why. That's, oh yeah, yeah, there you yeah. go. I'm like super. Yeah, that explains why you're spending so much money on these. I'm spending so much money. That makes sense. Mobile games. So there was a son or a daughter of a billionaire in Dubai and she basically spent like three million dollars in the game <laughs> and uh, no. she was the biggest whale she just had so much money I forget what her name was but then there was an, also another really rich billionaire or something in Dubai at, and you could track their locations if they allowed it in the app yeah. and this guy would only be at beach clubs in the Mediterranean Sea and just like buying these hundred dollar packs all day and he spent like a million dollars too at that point, can you reach out to them personally and and invite them and be like, yeah. hey, like they come wanted on. to. They did. <laughs> They're like, this guy's great. Like he's literally saving our. Yeah, yeah. yeah they spent. A lot I would of money. do that. I'd fly them out. Like give them give them as much wood as they want to. From that. <laughs> like, you spend a million dollars, you get unlimited everything in the game. Like it becomes no longer a yeah. challenge anymore. That's Was like, he the exactly. best player in the game? Yeah, yeah. It was a pay to win game. I mean. I mean, there are some games that are not pay to win. For example, League of Legends, like you just get yeah, skins, yeah. like you need skill. And there are games that where you just spend as much money and you become the most powerful being in the planet.
I wonder what wow. she's thinking now, though, especially after the games, like falling out of rel- relevance. She, yeah, you get bored you of it. You know? like, I'm well, sure no. she has so much money. Oh, okay, care. that's a fair yeah. point. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, three million. She's probably running Rubet. Yeah, <laughs> that's a family business. <laughs> she made all it back. Steak. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that was my income tra- trajectory. I made 140k yeah. my last year there, and then after that, I started my own business. And then those two years, I probably made 65k each, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, maybe 50k in 2020 but then in you know in 2021 with youtube and stuff that it, that grew a lot so what are we talking i would say like 200 200k 200, 2021. yeah 200 maybe like if you add in my investment income it was probably a little bit more but mm-hmm. yeah i feel like i could make way more money if i just did more sponsors that's something i'm kind of thinking of tinkering with this year it's like adding in the right sponsors like mm-hmm. i would still do some sponsorships don't get me wrong here like i would do some but i'm not like for a long time, I didn't want to put any YouTube ads in the videos. Yeah. Just like kind of like Andre. Um, and I, I think that as long as the reason I'm putting the ads in is like, or sorry, as long as the sponsor is the same consistent one over time, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I just don't want to send the wrong message where I'm like sponsored by Robin Hood one day, Fidelity the next, you know, Schwab the third yeah. day. Yeah. And well, that's the why they day. have yeah. uh, the clauses in there that says you're exclusive in that category. Right. right. You talked to me about this before this podcast, but you were talking about how it is to be single. You know. Yes, I am single. Do you think that there's any correlation between living with your father and also being single? Maybe subconsciously. Mm-hmm. I think subconsciously, yes. I'm. Uh, yeah, I think probably it's in the back of my mind for sure. I'm also pretty picky and i also maybe am i'm not good at dating multiple people at once Mm -hmm. so like i always had a hard time like if one person if i was dating one person like trying to find other people to date and i think what happens is i get really over invested in that one person and that's a turn off right because i'm just like i'm ready to go i'm like hey i really like you like let's let's hang out all the time but when you're dating you kind of want to take it a little bit slower and mm-hmm. you really just try to like connect with that person and learn more about them and i feel like i can't even be myself until like the fourth date so like a lot of times i don't even get to the fourth date put it that way do you think yeah. that it's usually the girls not reaching out back to you for the second date or they're ghosting you or is it you being too picky so like which side of the uh, it's probably both both. Yeah, I've had many my fair share of like yeah. people that don't reach out after the second I, yeah. date. I think the issue I, is that I it takes you bit. four dates to open up. I and think it, it takes it, even three, even yeah. two is too much. You need to be pretty open on the first date. I think, and, and the cure to open. that, yeah, I just be well, not like nervous or not like, you know, or, or not like uh, putting on a bit more of like a like a facade, not a facade. I don't know, but but you know, guard up. Go, yeah, your guard up. Going yeah. into it just like, hey, this is me. And I think the cure to that is going on a lot of dates, back to back to back. So, See, in th- you know what? Like you, like you did 30 TikToks in 30 days. 30, <laughs> 30 dates in 30 yeah, days. Yeah, 30, 30 dates in 30 days. 30 days. 30 yeah. days. Or me, even, even five a week, Monday through Friday, every night. Wow. And just say, you know, I'm going to go out to dinner. Yeah. Every night. I'd like that. And just be expensive. It, Jack, well, do you want to be the first? Happy first date yeah ah, shucks. yeah <laughs> but but here's the but here's the thing there'll be i mean i, I don't know how you coordinate right, that right. realistically but but you'll I, get a, a, a sense very quickly what you're looking for and you'll be the, the picky one mm. because you'll know like oh i don't like when you know people who do this and i prefer this and i i like that right you'll know so fast that you know after the 10th one it'll just be like oh, i gotta do another one of these and then you're yourself yeah yeah and i think for me like even on this podcast i don't really feel 100 percent authentic no offense not because of you guys but because the cameras are on and stuff like that like Mm -hmm. even on my own channel it's like Mm -hmm. really hard to like for me to show the real my real self the personality a little bit yeah yeah and i think i like especially on a date you know i'm like I'm trying to be as right, positive as I yeah. can be. I'm like pretty optimistic, but it really takes a long time to get to know yeah. somebody. I don't think you need to be I positive. I think you thing. just embrace however you feel. You're having a bad day. I'm having a bad day. I got a headache right now, but <laughs> here I am. <laughs> yeah, my steak's undercooked, but uh, yeah, you know, 10 I'm out of not. 10 yeah. on my video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just something kidding. I would say though. Like, hey, like I'm really sorry. 10 out of 10. It's I mean, a good I do. Thing yeah. You're not single then, man. Because yeah, I know. Well, Macy, good. Macy knows <laughs> that. She knows. If I walk in, she's like, "Was it a 10?" I'm like, "Yeah, it was a 10 today." 
Oh. She's like, is there anything I could do? I'm like, no, yeah, I did title thumbnail. There's I nothing tried. Nothing you could do to solve the way I'm feeling. Right no, now. there's <laughs> nothing. Nothing you could do. It's no. ruined. <laughs> ruined. All of it. Right? No, no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll try. I'll try that next time. And one thing that's helped yeah. me out with my confidence yes. a little bit, at least, is the abundance mentality. So, like, of course. I find myself the more dates I go on, even if I'm not having a great time or I don't mesh very well with the person, I'm like, okay, you know what? I've been on, let's say, three dates in the past three weeks. That's an abundance, yeah. right? And it definitely helps in my confidence, which helps my personality shine through a little bit more. But I have the same issue that you do. It's mm. really hard to act yourself with someone that you're, it's kind of like performative, yeah. right? You kind of have to be like yeah. the perfect person. So Well, it's like stage fright. Be, it's, it's like stage yeah, fright. You just, yeah. you, you get it over with. And then the more experience you have, the less anxious you feel. Yeah. So yeah, that's where I'm at yeah. with that. Yeah, are you what, Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, whatnot? Uh, I had Hinge for a while. I've kind of like stopped it just because it, it was giving me more anxiety than like having it on. Really? If that makes sense. Yeah. Like I was always like nervous about it or I'd check it too much. I get kind of distracted. Yeah. Do you so ever like, get people like recognizing you and they'd be like, whoa, I got my stock advice. Yes, for you. that yeah. does happen. <laughs> that does happen. I think that yeah. actually led to me getting like a video date once during the pandemic. But then she got on the date and she was just like, tell me about being a TikToker. Like oh. I just wanted to match with you to... Oh to, gosh, to that would TikTok. That yeah. would upset me. Yeah, I know. Oh yeah, man, she had a King Charles Cavalier too. I was so oh, excited. Wow. I was already thinking about my future with them, but you know. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, but but yeah, but so yeah, that does happen. Um, yeah. But I think it's still a net net positive thing. Like yeah, it, it's like reputable, and people will Google you, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah. like he's like a normal sure. human being, and they yeah. can see what you look like on video. So like, it's it's helpful. Yeah, I don't think it's a downside thing, but no, no, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, that and that yeah. same stuff happens to me. There was this girl that I've been DMing with for a while now, probably like two weeks, and it was actually pretty lengthy messages. Ooh, and she her Instagram profile is private, but she did have a gallery. Right, like a link in her uh, bio, and I tapped it, and she's a model. And I was like, wow. looking at all of her photos and everything, like, dang, this girl's very pretty. And we were talking a lot, <laughs> right? Like a lot. Yeah. And then uh, I finally send the follow request, and she accepts it. Second photo down, it's like her and her boyfriend. <laughs> she's talking about how much he, she loves him, and I'm like, we've been talking for like a while but now. Now, in fairness, was she talking like in a flirtatious yes. way? Wow. Yes. Do you tell the boyfriend this? I mean, I'm like, just gonna. Yeah, you gotta I, leave, I, leave, I, leave. Yeah, leave it. Just, I'm, yeah, I'm gone. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Man. So sometimes that happens. You know what I mean? Or you're just too good looking. I don't know. Well, I don't think she was in it for that. But, <laughs> okay. But yeah. And shady. I know. Shady, it's crazy man. stuff out there. Do you yeah. have people reach out to you because you work with Graham, for example? All the time. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I wouldn't say all the time, but a decent amount. Yeah. Where people will be like, hey, man, I got this question. Can Graham answer this question or whatever? I'm, I, I mean, I mean women. Yeah. Do women reach out to you to date? Because to, they're like, oh, Graham. Like, I've oh, had people reach happened, out to no. me for Jack. Believe yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. I like but that. I don't Yeah, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but. Uh, That's funny. Not the best options. <laughs> Oh, are you talking There's, about Graham posted on his Instagram one time? He wanted me to go on a date with someone. Uh, and yeah. We didn't specify the gender. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, no, that's, I wasn't even talking about that, but you oh, go you ahead. Were, oh, okay. I, I was talking about something else. Yeah, he posted on his Instagram because we had this idea to bring a first date on the podcast and we could talk to this person, right? This girl, ideally. I remember you had like the, th the episode where he had like three women blindfolded or he yeah. was blindfolded. Oh, this is before, way before yeah, that. This, this was is like our two years first ago. one. We yeah. just started the podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our one yeah. idea was, yeah, Bring let's get, date. yeah, we wanted to do get Jack a Tinder date on yeah. the podcast. Got it. Uh, but we felt on Tinder, it's, we, Jack wasn't having good luck getting oh, someone from Tinder on the pod, like and going over to a stranger's to house on as well. Right? Yeah. Yeah. How so, old are you, Jack? 23. Oh, you're young. Okay. Yeah. But I posted on Instagram and I, I, I think I showed a picture of you. Yeah, like, Hey, if anyone like looking for a date. Yeah. And turns out he got a lot of swipes, swipes ups, right? A like, lot. Like nice. it was probably up for 15 or so minutes and he yeah. maybe got 20 or so swipe wow. ups. Yeah. All dudes, not a single girl. <laughs> so he didn't specify in the posting <laughs> if I'm looking for women, but I, I was and I still am. That's so okay. Noted. We just took it down. And that yeah, was that. We, <laughs> we just noted. took it down. I did like yeah. it didn't happen. Took it down. I like that. Yeah. No, yeah. the other one was uh, someone who became very persistent uh, wanted to to go on a date with Jack and messaged mm. me and said she she messaged Jack and Jack wasn't getting back to her, so she messaged me and then I brought her up to Jack and I looked and I said Jack she seems kind of normal and uh, you might want to you know reach out and Jack was like no I'll do it I'll do it Jack never reached out but it was just the incessant just like hey 
what's going on? What's going on? Like, like just the follow ups got too much. Oh, like a follow up a week later, like fine. But when it was like she multiple, I actually don't even know who he's talking. Oh, wow. Multiple follow ups, and <clears throat> then I'm like, wow, if she's if she's sending me messages and I'm not responding, and she mm. sent me like five or six in a few days, like that's too much. That's too much. And so yeah. like, all right, Jack, dodged a bullet there. Okay. Too much. Well, it seems like you've got a lot of options out here too. Vegas working is a on it. Yeah, we live in place. Learn. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm t- I'm rethinking this whole thing now with Jack. I- I'm thinking it's better he's single. There's more time to work. Mm. His, uh, his focus is going to be. Uh, but he the just pot. plays ping pong. I yeah, know, I'm not the pong. type. Yeah. Like yeah. Graham, I think is a type where he finds someone he invests himself all the way in it. I'm very much not that person. Interesting. I don't fall in love quickly. I find someone and I like them and then we become friends first Mm. and we're friends for a while. But I also don't really want to spend like so much time with this person. Like my last girlfriend, I probably hung out with her three, two to two times a week, maybe. Mm. I think that's, and that was like, well, she's your girlfriend. But that was high school. No, that was college. That was college. Yeah. That was like three months of high school and then two. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. One thing you brought up before this podcast yes. was that you have a chunk of change you're sitting yeah, on. Yeah, but here's oh, how you're oh, investing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I have enough for a down payment on a house in the Bay. Cool. And that's just sitting in cash. And I, you know, I have a good chunk invested in the market as well. That's just kind of, I'm still DCAing into that. Yeah. But I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should buy an investment property. I don't know if I should buy a single family home to live in myself. You know, I still live in my dad's house. Mm-hmm. Or should I just go rent somewhere in this in San Francisco and just try to continue to build my income with yeah. YouTube and TikTok and all that stuff? Kind of just holding because I don't really know what's going to happen to the economy. And I think we'll know a lot more in six months, especially with, uh, you know, you know how like the first inflation report in November of 2021 was like 6% or something. Yeah. I, I think in November of 2022, we'll have that one year data of like okay how has inflation been for the past from 2021 to 2022 when mm-hmm. it really started to ramp up and that's when i think we'll ha- we'll know a lot more about interest rates inflation the economy what's going to happen interesting so why so are you set on moving out you're going to move out either way i think so i think so this summer 100 percent. yes okay i would say it's probably better for you to rent than buy something up there i think I when do. you look at the values in the bay area yeah Renting almost always makes more sense mm. unless you're buying and, and planning to keep this house for the rest of your life. It's right. probably in the short term. Renting is better. Also gives you a lot more mobility. Yep. Where in the future, if you want to up and leave or go travel, just do whatever. You're not going to be stuck and saddled with a house that you're going to have to rent out that probably is not going to cash flow. Mm. So I'd say you're better off renting. Yep. Good mobility. Uh, and plus your income is going to fluctuate so much for these next like five, 10 years. Yeah. I'd rent. Um, as far as the rest of the money, do you want to be a landlord? Mm, not really, no. I know then, you're a landlord. How do you like it? Uh, property manager? It was great in the beginning. Now, uh, yeah, I have property manager. Yeah. If I could, I mean, I don't want to say if I could snap my fingers and just be done with it all, but right now at this point in time, I want nothing to do and just like my my brain, my capacity is filled. And yeah. so like yeah, anything yeah. at this point, now, now I'm not have to like, now I forget things just because mm. I have no more space. So like yeah. something is forgotten. Um, but yeah, the properties. In comparison to everything else right now, they make very little in terms of the percentage. Right. So it's just, it's a mental drain, but they're all rented, thankfully, and you know, it's good it's enough. Kind of on but, autopilot. Yeah. But just thinking like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm making sure the property taxes are due. And if yeah. I get a notice in the mail about like insurance coming out, like I'm the one who deals yeah. with it. I don't to deal with it. It's those little things that add up. Little things that add up. Uh, so actually the, the one I've enjoyed so far was uh, I invested in a syndicate with Brandon Turner mm. and uh, in a mobile home park and he takes care of everything. Oh, that's good. And I loved that because it's like a stock that, you know, he's doing all the work and I just, it's kind of like a REIT right. in essence. But, uh, you know, it's a syndicate where I'm involved, uh, you know, at least on the in- investor side. I've liked that so far. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't dump everything into that, but, um, you know, I, I value simplicity so much right now. And Me that's too. why I've just like the index funds. And that's why I say for you at this point in time, when you're yeah. so busy, at least with index funds, it's so you don't have to do anything. Yeah, you don't have to, do, you don't yeah, have to stress. Don't do if the market goes down, it's an index fund. It's like the yeah. whole market goes down. It's yeah. not just you. Like you're not doing anything wrong. That's what I like about index funds. Yeah. So, the other thing I want to bring up was that my chunk of change can buy a very crappy place in the Bay Area, right? It can buy like a condo, Mm -hmm. oh, you know, a one bedroom little mini thing that I would never live in for like the rest of my life. I live in, in it for like 
a year maybe but yeah. it, or it's going to be a big fixer upper right like it's yeah really tough, how much so. how much cash are we talking about here oh like half a mil oh yeah i would say just dollar dollar cost average more. yeah dollar yeah. cost yeah i would say i have a hundred thousand dollars in cash at all times just sitting in a yep. high yield saving and then the other 400 that's just dollar cost average. yeah yeah okay thanks so simple i'd rent good I'm mobility rent. yeah yeah most likely there's, there's no sense in you buying something like that um I would say when you're ready to settle down, yeah. uh, you know, maybe have a family or something like that, and you know where you want to live, and mm. you're like, this is where I want to live for the next 15 years, then buy. Okay. But until then, yeah, I Thank think you. mobility is really enough. important. Fair enough. What about you, Jack? What do you think? For you? Yeah, do you agree with Graham's comments? Yeah, I agree with Graham. I think you shouldn't be totally closed off to the idea of being a landlord. Mm. Uh, okay. But also, I wouldn't consider buying too much right now, mm. so... I think, right. Yeah. I would say just dollar cost averaging into an index fund would probably just be the most ideal thing. But also when you are sitting on that cash that is invested, yeah. always, you know, if you are considering being a landlord, just like studying some deals when did, and whatnot. When did you close it. in your house, Jack? October 11th. October 11th, 2021. Last year. Kind of interesting. That was almost near the peak of the market. Your house is a your house is a Libra, that wasn't might, it? The market has still gone up. So I bought my house just under six hundred thousand yeah. dollars, and the zestimate oh, no, the <laughs> zest <laughs> says it's like I don't know six seventy or six eighty. Zestimate, how right. accurate but is I'm the zestimate? Not, yeah. not accurate. But I'm just but I'm just saying it's it's odd, you know, because the stock market peaked in November of twenty twenty one. So it's kind of weird that you know Jack buys and then yeah. thirty days later the market peaks. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Hey, you know, yeah. then when he sold Robin Hood, it pops the next day, like an hour later. <laughs> so is he the so, counter trade? So is you, that what you're trying to say? Or yeah, are you, you saying I should just empty everything into the stock market right now? <laughs> if you want it to crash, if I want the world to end, or yeah, yeah. Oh wait, empty. You mean wait. like sell off all your investors? No, like, like put all of my money, all of my cash now in the stock. Market. In the stock market, it's gonna crash. Yeah, please don't, yeah. Jack. But please if don't. you if you pull out all your money out of the stock market, it'll go up. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see what happens <laughs> with that. Yeah. We okay. tested the Robin Hood theory. I've been wanting to test this for the longest time, and know, it proved to be Hood true. Theory. Part yeah. of me wants to see, like, but Jack has to investigate, like, a serious, he can't just, like, you know, oh, here's 100 bucks. Like, it's got to be a considerable amount of money. I've already lost so much money on Robin Hood, man. It's like, that was I my contribution. To, okay. That was the case uh, study. Jack, how about this? Now. Can we do a test? I think this would be really fun. Uh, fun it, we'll probably who? have to do a midweek. We'll probably have to do a midweek. I want, I, I'd say you invest $10,000 into, and we'll just do a one month or like, you know, one week or something like that. $10,000 into something. And then we track it the next week just to see if it's up or down from the day you bought it. And we're going to put the theory to that. Now it's 10 grand. So chances are in a week, plus or minus 10%. I mean, the very most. And that's like, a gen that would be a crazy week. You don't know that, man. It could be 40% for all I know, man. I have a question for Graham. Yeah. What's your five, ten year plan here? No, no clue. No clue. No clue. What's I know I want to do the plan? podcast. Um, one year plan is to continue at the same trajectory as I have been. So um, three main channels a week. Yeah, there are three main videos on the, on yeah. the main channel. We've talked about this before, but my original goal was to go down to two videos a week on the mm -hmm. main channel. And I became, I, I was so used to doing three. And I was yeah. like, oh yeah, eventually I'll go down to two. But then, I, but then every week I did three. I'm like, yeah, I got an extra video out there. Yeah. I got an extra video out there. Feels good. Yeah. And so I, I want to now continue that throughout this year because now mm -hmm. everything for me is like, oh, it's a bonus and an extra video and I'm right. still doing it. Um, I want to continue because I know building up this, but I would, I would not be able to build up the momentum again. I think I've worked so hard to build up that, that okay. stamina for three videos a week. As soon as I go into two, I'm never going to be able to it's get like back to It's like going to the gym. Thing. Right. What yeah. do you think about the future? Do you think? The podcast could be a really scalable format for you oh, yeah. five years down the line. Yeah, You're I like, would. This yeah. is it. One day I could see myself putting like 80% of the effort in the podcast mm -hmm. and treating the podcast as I did the main channel. Like not that I don't treat the podcast, uh, you know, well, but it's just my my focus has always been main channel first before anything. Like that was mm -hmm. that's still old, my my biggest focus is that everything else is secondary to, to that main channel. But at some point I could see that switching. Flipping. I don't know when. Um but I'm getting better now if I, I think there's been maybe two, two times this year where I've uh, not posted. And on the main? On the main channel. Yeah. I think uh, in terms of like three times a week. So right. I missed two episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I, I, it's easy for me. Like before, I'd have panic attacks. So like I'm missing an episode. Yeah. It was like I, would, I, I wouldn't miss an episode. I know how like, that feels. Yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't. 
Uh, but there was, uh, you know what? It was on a holiday. I remember this. It was on a Labor Day. Uh, Labor Day. Mm. I didn't post that day, even though I had a video ready because it was a holiday. And just the amount of nerves I had, being like, oh my gosh, I, I post on Friday. My next video is not going to post until Wednesday. Why is it? I freaked yeah. out. And yeah, so I yeah, never yeah. missed a yeah, video. Sure. So, uh, but yeah, I missed two and I didn't feel bad about it. Mm. So it, it, I'm moving in that direction. But I'm still, you know, I want to post my three. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Jack, what do you think of his plan? I think it's a fantastic plan. I think he mm. should go all in on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I like his plan a lot. I think it makes sense. One thing that is a little concerning uh -huh. is when he says, oh, I'll never be able to go back up to three. And when he does describe things as like for things such as forgetting certain things because he feels like his, <clears throat> his brain's capacity is mm. already full. That sounds like burnout to me. Like okay. very clearly. And I'm worried that you are still sprinting and it's just straight yeah. into a wall. Well, no. So what happened is that I've taken on too many obligations. I've, I've said yeah, you yes. you have a lot of stuff. Yeah, I've said yes to every, not every opportunity. I've said yes to almost every opportunity that's good. And these are great opportunities. And I've said yes to them because I'm like, I'd be stupid to turn this down. And like, I don't know how long this is going to last mm. for. This opportunity is here. I'm going to take it. Like creator properties with Ryan Pineda. Or Correct. Right? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's been a whole bunch of them. They're mm. all good. Um, but I think mentally I have space for like three, even though 10 of them are like home runs. But like I could focus mentally on so many things and there's like three of them. So I think I said yes to too many things and that really affected me. So like I've been slowly working on scaling back. Um, I've been slowly cutting things, not because they're bad, but just because it's like mentally. I, I yeah, just, low ROI. No, not no. even. It's just, huh. it, it's it's more of just a mental drain. Like some of these things are really high ROI. Yeah, I think the brain only has a finite amount of space, right? Yeah. So like, if you're if you're thinking about ROI in a in a vacuum, yeah, you know, the mentorship group probably makes you X amount of dollars. But if it's taking up that mental space, that mental space can't be used for something else. Yeah, and it's that tough. Is higher yeah. ROI because I do look at every hour of my day. I'm like, this hour is worth that this amount of money, and I right. calculate that like everything I do per hour that that is the opportunity cost yep. so if i go and have a coffee with someone in the afternoon that's a very expensive coffee so like i gotta prioritize everything else and like if i take an hour off it's not just that hour it takes me three hours to get back, get in back the zone. into it i know exactly how so you know, yeah. it's uh yeah even i forget what it was um and i've started looking at this if if i answer a text even though that text might be just a simple thing, then I'm waiting for that person to respond back yeah. to that text. I'm keeping an eye on it. It, it, it like takes my focus away even just a little bit. And that little bit of focus, I, it takes me like 30 minutes to get back to where I was in that like zone. Uh, yeah, the, the zone, zone is called, tough to get in. The flow state. The flow state when is I'm, hard to I, get into. I'm in the flow state for like four hours, five hours of the day during certain hours. And anything that takes away from that, I just, I can't do it. So that's mm -hmm. why what are you doing be so there rigid fl flow state planning. scripting or planning? Planning, yeah. planning. Yeah. And then I can only film before 9 p.m. because after 9 I get tired. Yeah, so, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't it's not as energetic and not as fun. So mm. I have certain filming times for certain planning times. So Yeah, I'm the same way. I got to film yeah. like usually afternoon. That's when I film. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. from between 12 and 3. Yeah. Like that's when I'm the most energetic. Yeah. I film my best filming times are usually 4 to 8 p.m. Ah, yeah. right now. Evenings. Yeah, it's right now. Yeah. It's right now. Yeah, it's early mornings. It's too like, I, I feel groggy. Right, I feel groggy. like my eyes just like, ah, oh, so. Okay, yeah. fair. Well, I think it's a good, I think it's a cool plan. Yeah. I would love to see you guys do more, more podcast stuff, like, or just yeah. double down on podcast stuff. I think that'd yeah, be really interesting. Yeah, I think there's only so much we could do on the podcast because you don't, you can't oversaturate. Um, so right now, oh, we just started doing this. This So when this posts, this we will already be doing this, but we're going to twice a week. On the yeah. podcast, so once once every Sunday and then once every Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I don't know if we could do more than that realistically without like over you know, yeah, without podcast, overdoing it. Idea. So I I'd say I guess you would focus on yeah. like higher quality people. Guess I think so. So I think like getting celebrities or something. Yeah, we we definitely want to grow the roster of guests. We would love to get into like. TV actors, mm, yeah, yeah mainstream. Uh, mainstream. Taylor Swift, yeah. If you're watching Taylor, <laughs> come, come on, on the yeah. podcast. Yeah. And it's, me. it's interesting though. The downside <laughs> with a lot of those people though is that they have PR teams, right? And they're so strict. They they don't want them going on. It's a liability. They come on the iced coffee hour. They talk about something. It's like, hey, it's bad. Yeah. Uh, gets them in trouble. Mm. So uh, yeah, it's it's a lot more easy to get someone on um, YouTube 
come on and talk about yep. there's, yeah yeah they what, what are the repercussions nothing yeah so okay Fair. but yeah that's our goal Okay. So if you're watching this, by the way, and you have any recommendations or you have a connection to someone who you think would be amazing on the Ice Coffee Hour, uh, we'll, we'll link to all the information down below in the description where you could either submit an application or, uh, yeah, make the connection. We would love that. I think you should do, like, professional golfers, man. There's so many that live in Las Vegas because of that TPC that's over yeah. here. And they make a lot of money. As Got we're it. getting, like, deeper into this, we're starting to realize more. It's, like, not as easy as just getting a cool guest on. They have to yeah. fit this like this mold of just like what will do well and what comes across on camera because especially with with I don't want to say a lot of athletes but you know they're really good at that sport but when you put them in front of a camera speaking it's just you you really yeah. have to like pull information out or it's it's you know you want it to be exciting so I think some of the best guests that we've had uh, Houston uh he runs royalty exotics mm -hmm. you put him in front of a camera oh my gosh he lights up yeah like he's yeah. more talkative and like tells better stories on camera uh he's so good and then um brandon turner brandon turner is another <clears throat> great example and alex ramosi mm -hmm. those are people you put them in front of a camera and they just bloom and gl it's, it's it's so good like we don't even need to talk yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. that's what i love about alex ramosi he just like he just talks i'd be like and go it, and it's, and it it's, and it's great stuff. Talk, talk. Yeah, talk. that was a really great episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Houston's the same way. You just talk, and he'll he'll do the entire podcast himself. Mm -hmm. It's so you want good. Me to we talk just sit more? here and listen. No, yeah, no, we just we just listen. That. We just yeah. listen. Yeah. I guess <laughs> we, I could talk more. And then we then it's always Jack I'm be always like, like, wait, what do you say? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! This is Jack. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Get at least one of those in every. And then it's me. How much was it? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Do you want me to bring up a, a story? Sure. Yes, we'd love to. Okay. Go. The first time I was on the Graham Stephan show, yeah. which was when I called in mm -hmm. on TikTok, I was actually a little bit disappointed after. And I felt a little sad because I felt like I looked up to Graham for so long and you know I finally got on the podcast and I felt like the call was pretty short and just for the video and then like we didn't get to chat after. Aww. And I felt like we can maybe talk about this because this is—it probably was a parasocial relationship on my side, mm -hmm. right? But I felt like, you know, this is the guy I looked up to for so long, and he was very short with me. Not that you were short with me, yeah. but like you were just doing it for the for the show, and yeah. then boom, hang up. Right. And you know, I was just starting to make YouTube videos, and I, at that moment, I remember being like so disheartened and like so sad. Oh man. Okay. So I wanted to bring that up and confront Graham. Yeah, Stephan. I'm glad you did but, that. Yeah. But wow. also, but also to let you know that now. I don't think that you meant any harm by that. Mm -hmm. And I know you a little bit more personally now, especially after we met at that carrot event. And I felt like, oh, like this is, yeah, he's totally normal. It was just like, he's busy and like his time is worth, is valuable. So like I could see did why. We not, that, yeah. yeah. Did we not talk? I, Cause usually after every call, there's like a few minutes afterwards. Do we not? Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't no, do you didn't do that usually. Yeah. No, oh. you would just say you, it'd be before the call a little bit. Oh, that was, was it. like a minute. You know what it was? Call. Jack would line up three to yeah, four calls and, uh, at a back time to back to back. Yeah. and we would do them. Nine, nine twenty, uh, nine forty, ten. 40, yeah. 10. Got it. And we had to set these strict deadlines. Uh, because otherwise... Because um, we had scheduled calls with these people. Yeah, yeah. That was the difficult part with those calls is because sometimes if we would run over on one, the other person would be unavailable on the next one. Right. And so if they went over a certain time, we missed the next one, which then pushed the next one back. And pretty soon we're on yeah. like the third call. I'm texting Jack like, hey, man, we got to move it to like 1 p.m. Yeah, because you that guys work? did text me and say, hey, I'll be like 10 minutes late. And yes. I remember being like, okay, that's, that's fine. Yeah. So that's probably what happens. Yes. I'm just letting you know. That's what oh it's. man! And then I'm I told all my friends that, yeah. about it, and wow. I was like, "Ah, oh, like Graham wasn't that nice to me." I never like, considered oh, yeah, that that people nice. could develop, like you said, parasocial relationships with Graham. And of course, these calls. Yeah, never thought of ice coffee I. hour. Yeah, yeah. We just figured Frugal they just wanted to call in and ask questions. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I think maybe as like a creator, you know, especially one on TikTok, mm -hmm. and like didn't really find my footing on YouTube yet. Like that's really, I was like hoping for a little bit of like mentorship or like, hey, you should try this or you know, like you'll run into this problem yeah. and like just avoid this. And so, but that was then. Got and it. Now, oh, I'm okay. sorry, man. It's yeah. Cool. I yeah, remember cool. back then. Yeah. Scheduling them back to back was difficult. It's like, that's what made it where you had to like end at a certain time. And immediately afterwards we'd call another person. Were you there in person, Jack? Yeah. Cause you were, yes. Some of these you, you were there. 
Yeah, and Jack would be like looking at the time and texting the next yeah. person. Hey, we're gonna be yeah. five minutes late. Uh, and then texting that. the person after that, being like, hey, we're gonna be this time. I think you were texting me yeah. probably. Yeah. For context, on the Graham Stephan show, in the beginning, some of the first style of videos that we did was people would call in, Graham yep. would provide finance, not fi entertainment not advice. for entertainment purposes yeah. only. And they weren't paying advice for it. That was a nope, big thing too. For yeah. these people, and he would just talk them mm -hmm. through whatever financial or relationship, sometimes problems yeah. that they had, and we'd post those. And you were someone that called in a very yeah. long time ago. Very true. And yeah. I just want to say like yeah. now being on a creator on on the creator side, we get a lot of requests. It's like the DMs are full all day with a bunch of questions. And I try to get to as many as I can, but now I kind of know like maybe where you were coming from. Yeah. It totally makes sense. Like, yeah. Any other, you know, issues you have with Graham? Yeah. You know, bring in, we may as well bring in all the issues. Yeah. yeah. No, the coffee was actually coffee was very good. good. Yeah. Okay. It was very good. You got to say it's really good now for sale. Bankrollcoffee.com. Yes. How is that doing? Is that still not doing okay? I mean, <laughs> we're not doing it for, we're, we're not doing it for money. Got I it, mean, yeah. at this, at this point, like at the very beginning, Prices were significantly lower. They're like twenty five percent lower than they are now. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, and it's, and it's our fault. Like, yes, we could raise prices, but yeah. uh, you know, and we did a little bit. Like, we had to ra we raised prices enough to cover our own costs, or that we're not a loss. Mm. It's doing just fine, but it's not something that we do for money. Does uh, it sell so, well without you shouting it out? Correct. I mean, does it sell pretty good without it, you shouting yes. it out? Oh, it does. Yeah, it That's does. Great. Yeah, it's it's doing. If I, so I've. Don't really shout it out. Um, I have yeah. it as the banner below below the main channel videos. You have yeah. that like YouTube thing. Uh, it's there. It does about two to seven hundred dollars a day. Oh, that's great in sales consistently. Wow. Um, we have a fifty five percent returning customer rate, which is really, 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 really high. high. Um, and they get a discount too if they do the subscription. So if I think it's like 15, 10 or 15% off, if they agree to the subscription shipping like once a week or once a month or whatever. Mm. So a lot of people have done that for the discount. Um, that's great for us too, because at least we could kind of predict like where the next sales are going to be, but it's good. And then if I do a shout out, like, and I'm talking like a main channel video, yeah, we'll do anywhere between 50 and a hundred grand of, of sales. So wow. I usually have to give them a heads up and like, yeah. hey, I'm doing an update on this. Let's make sure we have enough. Have you noticed um, like every time you shout something out, the efficacy goes down or no? No, but wow. I've only shouted it out like three times or Got four it. times in the last two years. So it's rare. But and usually those videos are more about like, hey, I'm not making money still. <laughs> like, it's interesting. Yeah. I, I find it and people yeah. love it. The coffee for me, uh, the best thing is the branding. Because everyone is like, yo, yeah, man, there's Bankroll good, Coffee. Good. No one asks, yo, how's your rental properties doing? Yeah. Nobody cares. They're, how's yeah. the coffee? Because it's something that anyone could buy at, at any price point. They could get it. Well, here's what I was enjoy it yeah. about the, you know, how I asked you of the efficacy of the shout out. Yeah. Well, eventually, I don't want to do that many sponsorships because what if one day I want to create a business on top of my YouTube business where every time I shout out, I can just get free customer acquisition? Right? Do you think it not? It doesn't matter. So no, like I don't. Load up the sponsors. No. Yeah, it doesn't matter because you got to think too. Every video, there's going to be a significant portion of them that have not seen your previous videos and are Correct. brand new. And so every time I post a video, you could see just like the new viewers who have never seen me before. It's shocking that oh. when I post a video, it's like I'll say, "What's up, Graham? It's guys here." And they're like, and people are like, you, you made a mistake. That? And I'm like, I've been saying this for like two years, mm. but they've either not watched the previous videos or they're brand new. And so that's why sometimes like you have to repeat certain topics because you're reaching a new audience that hasn't seen the old ones. Have you noticed your new audience or your new members declining or are they still growing? Like your new audience coming to you? Growing, but not as fast as 2020. Like 2020, mm, 2020. I think was this 2020, 2021 was an anomaly year. Mm. I think January of 21, I gained 180,000 subscribers in one month. New. And that was wow. new. Uh, that was because of GameStop and Dogecoin. Um, and that just brought so many new people into into the investing space. Now is like we're entering a time of what should be normal. Mm. Twenty twenty just like exploded. Yeah, and so just like you see the tech companies going up like four hundred percent. You saw that on the finance channels. What do you think about like dead subs? Because like you definitely have some subs mm -hmm. that don't watch you anymore. Yeah, right. Like they're just inactive. What's your opinion on that? How do you get them back? Is there any way to get them back? Or they Nothing. Just, like, they I, just I don't, focus, you don't, I don't focus, focus on, on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I would focus on the people that watch the content. Mm. And even for me, I subscribe to channels that I saw like five years ago and I don't really watch them. But yeah. it's the occasional video every now and then I'll see. Oh, 
What do they post? Click on it and then I'll watch it. Very few channels I'll watch every single video. Mm. Very few. Do so. you worry about the view to subscriber ratio? No, I don't um, think about it. Okay. No, for finance, it's different than, than you know, like Matthew Beam or Mr. Correct, Mr. Ryan correct. Trahan. Yeah, Shout out Ryan. Finance, I would say having a 10, 10 to 15% view to subscriber ratio is really good. Okay. Less than 8%, and it's bad. Probably bad. I usually aim for about 10%. That's you, about for me. You feel bad when you put out an evergreen video and it's like a 10 out of 10. First no, because day. I, I know, you know it's going to be. Yeah, so I know like, it's those are the only 10s that are good. They're like, all right, I yeah. don't really care. Yeah, I posted a credit card video and it was so bad. Like, it was a 10 out of 10 of like, of all the 10s, that was the 10. If they did that. <laughs> but that uh, means your next 10, your next nine won't be 10s. Because... I agree. <laughs> that, I do tell, well, I count some of those as like a nine is still yeah, a 10. Yeah, I hear uh, that. But we'll see what the credit card video is. Um, now it is a, it's a three. Congrats. So yeah, That's it's sick. a three. Oh, it's it's a while to be a two. So you could see just how much it underperformed in the very beginning. Oh yeah, way significantly. Below. Yeah, way below the curve. Uh, but but I've gained thirty five hundred subscribers oh from that God. video, which is a lot. Usually I'll post a video and I'll gain. That's what I've noticed. Four hundred to fifteen hundred a video. Sometimes two thousand, thirty five hundred on this. So and yeah. So for my channel, I don't have a lot of those. I mean, I have some evergreens like that, but yeah. maybe I should post more of those just to get more of a stable AdSense revenue coming in because I don't really make that much on YouTube. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Okay. Evergreens yeah. are always true. I would well. do that. Uh, the do other, more evergreen yeah, stuff. The yeah. other one that uh, was really bad for me was this how to get a perfect credit score for $0. That was a 10 out of 10, and it became a 5. Mm. And it's still gaining about 3,200 views every other day. Search volume, mostly, probably. Yeah. And that's gained 3,000 subscribers. So for me, the credit card videos, believe it or not, get the most subscribers. And high CPM. And high CPM, because the people that watch those videos have to search for them. Like, they're the ones, how to get a credit score. Like, that's exactly what they wanted. All right, let's load up the credit card videos on yeah. the channel. They do so. You know, it's been a while <laughs> since I've done a credit card video. How about uh, cards for, like, certain people, like Gen Z? Millennials, would you do that? No, too, too, niche. too niche. Yeah, I did a best credit cards for millennials. My worst performing video of the credit cards. Mm. So it's just better to do top five credit cards 2022. Correct. Updated. And it's going to do so bad up front, but and I think long term will be well. fine. Yeah. Okay. I would do that. I would do, um, I loved your metaverse video, by the way. Thanks. He wrote that. Did you really? Yeah. He wrote most of it. Are you serious? Yeah, it was his first one. It was a banger. I loved it. Yeah, and the title came from Brian yeah. Jung because oh. it was very clickbait. Yeah. And I felt really bad about that. And I also, this is something I want to talk about. I don't yeah. want to become a stock picker on YouTube. Yeah. Like, that's not how I was taught to invest. Mm -hmm. And I definitely DCA still into the index funds. And I felt like that video was a poor representation of my channel. Maybe not the first half where I talk about the metaverse, but the second half where we talk about the ETF and the two investments. Oh, man. It's, it's the equivalent of, like, the gambling stuff. You know, uh, yeah, by kind picking of in the, a way, yeah. Just, I, 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 like had to say, I watched that good. video too. I liked it. Okay. Like, yeah. I think there's an audience for people who want to uh, to try their luck and are just looking for a point in the right direction. Mm. I, yeah, I wouldn't, like for me, I wouldn't make those videos, but I do see the appeal because I watch those videos. And Even I, though I don't buy them, but like I find them interesting. wasn't pushing them to buy the stock. No. I was just like, if you are interested, try this out. I but think that, it, still, that's... I think it's thought provoking. I would yeah. listen, as long as you go in and be like, "Hey, listen, I'm not doing this. I'm buying index fund, but if you're interested, these are this is a yeah. point in the right direction. These are the I I thought it was so interesting how they're involved in this mm -hmm. and just the development of the metaverse. I loved your video. Like Thank I you. I liked it. I, I saw a lot of other metaverse videos after that, and I was like, ah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah. <laughs> Andre, mind yeah, Mark. how to be a metaverse millionaire in a year? My plan to be I a metaverse was millionaire I mean, or something I, like that. Yeah. I have no qualms with that yeah. like i don't care i would continue all. uh okay. but you had but it's whatever's trending and yeah. at the time the metaverse, the metaverse was like was trending. really trending yeah if there's another subject that comes up at some point i don't see any problems with that as long as you're up front okay yeah thanks appreciate that i still probably will go away from the stock picking thing but that's fine. yeah as long as you say that you are just dollar cost averaging into index funds and stuff but yeah. this is some other stuff you learned on the side that's yeah. fine but you're also noticing as the stock market's been plummeting there has been like disproportionately a lot of negative attention going towards those who have suggested in individual stocks whereas mm. graham since he's always only shilled index funds is yeah. completely fine during this. That makes sense. So, yeah, but, yeah, it goes two ways. Uh, when everything's going up, I'm the idiot. And when everything's going down, I'm a genius. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Mm -hmm. Humphrey, thank you so much for Thanks coming for on. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it.